On the other hand, there seems to be consensus, and I can certainly attest to this myself, that American toilets are more likely to block than British ones. What? No, I just overdid it on the chicken vindaloo. That's not a crime, right? Hello, welcome to my bathroom. Like all American bathrooms, it does have a toilet, hence the name bathroom. And I just wanted to invite you into my bathroom today to show you my toilet, which is British hospitality in a nutshell. And as you'll see, there's one very key visual difference between British and American toilets. No, it's not painted in flags. It took hours to scrub those off. This difference concerns the water. Let's take a look. I thought I'd flush that. Now to any Americans watching, the sight of raised toilet water might not seem that odd. Although I can see why intimate close-up shots of my toilet might. Anyway, when I moved to the United States, the water level was a genuine culture shock. And that's because the water level in British toilets, unlike yours truly, isn't that deep. Also, Jason, is it clear that I am just sitting on the toilet and not actually doing the real thing? Yeah, because some viewers might be eating and I just, you know, I want to remain cognizant of the fact. Also, you can probably get out of the bathtub now. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to both approaches. If you're a man and you live in America and you need to, how can I put this without getting demonetized, piddle, then you might want to invest in shin guards. It's just a fact of life. But if you live in Britain and you need, you know, the other one, the deposits, is that the word we're going with? The deposits have further to travel, thus resulting in splashback. So why do we have this difference between British and American water levels? To find out, let's head to the studio. No, I do need to go to my studio to do this because I want to sit on my other throne. For answers, I turned to Quora.com to listen to the experts. The general belief seemed to be that American toilets utilise so much water because it acts as a sort of breakwater to prevent potentially deadly gases from entering the building. Although some would argue that deadly gases have already made it into the bathroom. But while looking into this, I accidentally discovered that British and American toilets utilise different flush systems. Americans who visited Britain often tell me over casual dinner conversation that they always found old British toilets difficult to flush. And there's a reason for this that I personally don't fully understand because A, I'm not a plumber and B, I don't want to understand. But basically, Jeremy on Quora says, in an American system, it doesn't matter how slowly you push the lever slash lever because it's just trying to open a plug, you know, to let the contents out. In the British system, you need to push the lever fairly quickly so it pushes the water without leaking and sometimes you need to do multiple pumps to get the water flowing. In other words, it's like jump-starting a car, although I wouldn't recommend using your toilet to go on a road trip. On the other hand, there seems to be consensus, and I can certainly attest to this myself, that American toilets are more likely to block than British ones. One of the the reasons for this might be to do with the size of the pipes. In America, standard toilet pipes are three inches in diameter. In Britain, the regulation diameter is four inches to account for water flow and Yorkshire puddings. Now we can hardly finish today's video without talking about one type of toilet in particular public toilets. If we weren't still in the throes of a pandemic, I would be down at the Sears Tower getting B roll from the gents lose on the 14th floor. I wouldn't be doing that. Dan, the security man, would have a fit. But another culture shock that hit me after I moved to the United States was that cubicle doors have a gap in them. Now, I've gotten used to it now because I take a towel everywhere I go. But it was a little disconcerting at first because the paranoid side of me thought that anyone could catch a glimpse of me putting on my shin guards. On the other hand, there is one nice thing about American public loos. You never have to pay to use them. Yep, that's right. Some British public loos will make you spend several pennies in order to spend a penny. And take it from me, that's the last thing you need when all you have on you is a checkbook. That's it for this episode of Lost in the Pond. Thank goodness we weren't. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a British toilet pipe size shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.